Right, so good evening, everyone. And uh, I'd like to say a huge um, heartfelt and warm welcome to all of you who are joining us this evening on the call. So I think there's quite a few more of us than there were last week already. I'm just going to get a few of those microphones close. There's not too much background noise. And uh, yeah, so um, just to recap a little bit on uh, what we did last week for those of you who are joining us for the first time today. Um, last week was the, 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 first, the first one in a series of um, eight or maybe 10 calls. I think pro probably we'll start with eight. And each call, um, one kind of follows on for the other, but they can also be standalone. So if you're curious to learn about what we did last week, I will give you a little recap, um, but you can also go onto my YouTube channel where I uh, publish uh, the videos uh, if you want to review the content a little bit more deeply. And um, it also includes, you know, the, the little quizzes and games and things that we do during this, uh, this time together on a Tuesday evening. So well, Tuesday evening for us, it's kind of midday in America. It's, I have no idea what time it is in New Zealand. <laughs> it's a little bit later in South Africa. I think Fiona's the furthest away. Well, you can't get much further in New Zealand, can you? So Fiona, Fiona what, time of the, what time of the day is it for you, my darling? Sorry? 7.30 in the morning. 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> wow. That's sunrise. Sunrise. <laughs> Super impressive. Well, this is just so, 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 so cool, isn't it? Uh, and I'm so um, thankful and, uh, and happy to uh, be able to share these few minutes with you here on a Tuesday. So I'm just going to probably mute most of the microphones and, um, and then obviously it, it, that the whole idea here is to really to make it interactive as well, right? So it's not just about me droning on for an hour. It's about people, um, you know, sharing their stuff. So um, last week, just to recap, uh, the first topic was about being willing to change um, because some, some, you know, if, if you're here on something like this is because not because something necessarily is really wrong in your life. It's just, you want to, you know, grow and, um, you know, it's just natural universal law that we want to grow and we want to increase and we want to have more experiences and, uh, and, and just, you know, feel better and, and have a better life in, in, in all ways because we can always do better right even if we've got a great life already we can always expand and grow and increase and so on so so the first thing is is that you know being in that position of being really like willing to change and um even if we don't know where we kind of like need to grow and change but just being in that really sort of like non-resistant state saying okay I can, you know, I can, I can deal with this, you know, let's, let's, let's make some changes here. You know, sometimes people see that as a, something that's really hard and you need to suffer and everything. And, and a lot of us do when we go through a process of huge change, um, but it can also be um, fun and interesting and, and uh, really insightful and inspiring as well, or kind of mixture of both, whatever it is, it's always worth um, being experimental in terms of, you know, uh, in terms of change. So that was the first thing to, whenever you, if you really feel you're like ready for it, just, just say that I, I'm, I'm willing to change. I'm ready for change. And uh, if you feel uncomfortable or frustrated or ang anxious or a bit, you know, sort of um, angry or whatever kind of emotion might come up, just say, okay, well, I'm willing to change that. I'm willing to change that because I, I, I don't want to have this, you know, drag this kind of anxiety or guilt or criticism or anything around with me anymore I'm going to be willing to change so before we even go into how we're going to do it it's just having a real willingness you know no resistance no resistance you know they say that water is the least resistance element on the planet and it is the element that will wear away a stone right once it goes around it and around it and around it. So just that willingness is just like letting go and, and not being resistant to, to anything that life puts in front of us. And then as soon as we start going into this idea of being willing to change, life will present things to us where we need to change. You know, life's very generous, you know, if we, as soon as we go into that, we're just like, oh, okay, right. That, that's so this week I had a, 
a huge experience about willing to change and um, I won't bore you with all the details but my goodness me it was so interesting to see how my, my initial reaction of absolute resistance and indignation and how could that possibly be true and I was like oh that's something where I probably need to change so uh, so we all have experiences so that was the first thing we said just that everybody's like last week talked about being willing to change the second exercise we did was taking at least if possible a whole day where every time you had a thought that you actually became conscious of to write it down especially if it was something that wasn't particularly positive write it down leave it on the table go and look at it an hour later and say and, and, and see how you feel about what that thought was that came into your mind. So the first thing is we know is that it's cause and effect. So if we don't change our thoughts, which is the cause, the effect, which is our outside world, health, wealth, and happiness cannot change. So first of all, we have to identify what the cause is. And by going through this exercise of deeply and carefully examining our thoughts, this is something we not, don't normally do, right? Which is like, mm, that's an interesting thought. We just think them. Okay, so we realize it's not an automatic process. It's something that, that, that we, can really, um, we can really control and that we can really uh, will ourselves to think differently. But first of all, we have to figure out you know, what's going on there. So that was it. So write down um, some, being willing to change, write down some of the thoughts. And then the last thing I really um, suggested was uh, to really have a think about one thing that you really, really want or have a burning desire for. Is it money? Is it better health? Or is it something to do with a, you know, your happiness, a relationship or whatever it might be? Just choose one thing. You know, it can be something really small. Sometimes it's easier to start with what we call the low hanging fruit. Okay. Rather than go for the, you know, the $25 million mansion in Beverly Hills or whatever, you know, just go for something simple. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and that's where we start the initiation of going through, you know, the, a, a process of different change. So, Anybody who was on the call last week, did anybody do any of this or did they have, a, have they got anything they would like to share about um, something that might have come up during the week um, that, uh, that they, they, they could use as an example? Viv, thank you. Hi everybody, good evening. Um, could could you just say... introduce yourself briefly because there's lots of people on the call who don't know you. Yeah. Uh, and, and then tell us your experience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my name's Vivian and I live in Poole and it's lovely to see all these lovely new faces. So I, I work as, as a coach and a counsellor. Um, I would want to say two out of three ain't bad. I think I did about one. So I did the first exercise definitely about change and I um, recorded something and I played that back so that was good. Completely didn't do the examine your thoughts thing. <laughs> At all. <laughs> interesting that because obviously that's the most challenging one and um then on the picking the thing i did pick something and i have to say that i think that's just been running through more subconsciously because i have noticed a change and a shift yeah no, normally the thing that we resist doing is the thing that we need to do most i had a feeling i'd say that <laughs> <laughs> yeah no don't want to do that don't want to do that oh Sorry. <laughs> so, well, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for that good. There you are. So, so that, that thing that you really want more, it's come up to more of a conscious level now. You're feeling it more strongly. You're seeing it more clearly in your mind. Yeah. Amazing. Anyone else would like to share about something? Uh, Zoe. Hi. Hi, um, I'm Zoe, for anyone I didn't meet last week. Um, I live in London and I am a fashion buyer. Um, so it was really interesting actually because I noticed um, at certain times when I wrote what, what I wrote and criticised myself was to do actually with my job. And then when I was doing something else, I was in a, say I've got a different business as well. And I was doing, when I was with my job, I was getting really frustrated and really um, annoyed with people. And then when I was doing my other business, I was getting, feeling of purpose and getting somewhere. And I thought that was really interesting because it's my first week back at work so it was just really interesting for me to see the shift that I've not been at work for six weeks and what actually 
um, I love and what I don't love. So I thought that was quite interesting for me last week. Yes, um, and, and you, you hadn't done that before to really sort of like no, notice, no. right, okay. No, not, not to that extreme and not, yeah. having, not in, involved or, or, or even thought about fashion and now being plunged into an industry which is very tough, but also just with the, it's funny, I actually realized a lot of my values that I really stand for are not being stood for in my fashion job right now. And I think that really got to me. So yeah, it was just really interesting. So that was my experience. And then, yeah, the thought of the one thing, it's just really echoed why I want to do the business, like my other business yeah. is off what I feel um, that I'm not getting out of my uh, career that I've done for so long now. Okay, amazing. Thank you. So just give us a juicy example of the stuff that you were thinking about your fashion business. No, do you know, it's actually the one thing that's really sad for me just now is obviously as a fa as a buyer, um, I work really closely with suppliers. I've been in the industry for so long. And the sad thing is that a lot of retailers are not paying suppliers they're withholding payments and actually I've got quite a lot of suppliers that are ready to go bankrupt so my morals in terms of being fair being treating people with respect you know they do so much for us and right. the feeling of not being able to help really affected me and made me really upset okay um, so yeah that was quite a big example for me okay amazing right so I'm gonna we'll we'll, we'll come up with a solution for that so uh, thank you, Zoe. Really, really important there what you've uh, what you've shared. Anyone else before we go into our evening exercises? <laughs> Can we good to go? Okay. So so today we're gonna um, just do the second part of identifying some things or, or the beginning of the work because this is what we're doing here is just like scratching the surface okay I'm just here to give you some ideas and some tools that you can go away with and practice because that you will the level of the success that you have in being able to change things would just really depend on how serious you take the work you know for me it's always been the most important thing I'll ever do with my life because I know that all, all the the, the, the things that I have in my life are caused by the quality of my thought. You know, thoughts create things. This isn't new, what I'm sharing here. So, so, so the entire focus on cause uh, will automatically produce the required effect. And so if you really take this seriously, you know, this, this, this can and definitely will, you know, will change your life. So, um, we're not going to go down like a psychological rabbit hole and, you know, pretend that, you know, we've got all these kinds of, um, you know, qualifications or whatever to be identified, but it's useful. It's a useful exercise to just in broad terms, identify what our deepest thoughts are about some general topics. Okay. So if you would be so kind to get a pen and paper, if you haven't got one already, and we're going to do a little exercise on eight categories, which are quite general. And the object of this exercise is to just identify uh, our just below the conscious thoughts about each of these topics. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is really be spontaneous in your responses. Okay. You have to let go of your conscious thought and then each time relax. When I say the word, breathe once or twice and then just write whatever comes to mind. Okay, it'll be about 20 seconds per topic. So very quick. Again, this is an exercise you can do more thoroughly at home. But the key here is not to think, ah, what do I think about this? No. Okay, the key is just to like whoosh, empty your mind whoosh, and then write whatever comes to, it comes to mind. Okay, don't judge, don't judge it. It can be positive, ne negative, neutral. You might have, you might, nothing might come up. Right, any, there's no right or wrong answer here, but the, the key here is to just whoosh, let go and then write. All right, and let's see what comes up. <laughs> so much fun. All right, so 
This is to identify in sort of step one, what you believe, okay? So we're going to, first of all now, relax the body as much as we can. Just let all any stress or tension that you have accumulated during the day out of the body. And the word is men. Okay. The next word again, you know, really just relax, just let those muscles go. Empty your mind. Women. Women. Right. Any word that just comes to mind or a sentence, doesn't matter. Just write it all down. Write it all out. 15 seconds. Whew. Don't think about it, just let it flow. Okay, next word. Again, relax, deep breath, breathe from the, you know, from the lower part of your stomach. Love. Love. Okay, stop. Next word, work, work. Okay, so we're halfway through now. Next word, relax, just relax. Money. No thinking, just right. Just let the words come through you, come through you to you. Feel them come up through you. Okay, next one. Sex. No right or wrong answer, just let the word come up or the phrase. Next one. Success. Success. Relax. Two more. OK, 
Okay, this is gonna get recentered again. Forget what you've already written, empty your mind. Next word is failure. What do I believe? Doesn't matter if nothing comes up or one word or 20 words. Just relax and let it come up. Okay. Last word. Okay, so again, this is just a beginning and you can go back and do these exercises and make the word, make it as long as you like. Okay, last word is God. God. That's it. That's it. So, did anybody have a, a little surprising answer that popped up out of nowhere? Anyone like to share? Joe? <laughs> Pick on me. <laughs> um, Introduce yourself first. Sorry, I missed the first part of your um, speech because I'm having problems with my computer and I couldn't hear you. Um, sorry, so I don't know if any of this is relevant to what, I, what you said at the beginning. And I'm not quite sure what you want me to, to come up with, really. Obviously, do you want me to go through everything that I came no, up with? No, just maybe, maybe pick one or two things that, that brought a word up that kind of surprised you. Oh, right, okay. Um, so I'm Jo, I'm from Poole in Dorset, um, known Bridget for years, and um, I work for Marks and Spencers and I teach yoga. So um, I think I've, the word frustration came up a few times. Oh, did but, it? Uh, yep. Und under what category? Uh, that was mostly, um, it was work and failure. <laughs> <laughs> work and failure, frustration in work and failure. Yep. Um, but then the other words that were quite common were sort of freedom, joy, um, consciousness, and loving. Good. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Cool. Anyone else like to share what came up? Particularly things that kind of were a little bit challenging or, you know, or surprised you? I'll share, um, Bridget. Hi, Kenny, thank you. Hi, um, my, yeah, my name is Kelly, I'm from Leicester. Um, I am a director of sales for a hotel group and I also have my own business as well. Um, two actually surprised me the most and um, one was uh when you asked when you said men the first thing that came to my mind was powerful but if someone asked me that i wouldn't say that so that that's obviously something in my subconscious that said that thought of that word straight away um and i don't have anything against men because i have a very loving partner so <laughs> i don't know why but you know but powerful isn't do you think powerful is negative no, but I always, I've always thought of women as, you know, powerful and independent. So it's interesting that I thought of that as the first thing of a man. Um, and actually, when the, you said failure, um, the first thing came to mind for me was my past. And I think that's always blocked me from believing that I can have success going forward because I've always been sort of, I've ticked the boxes of having success in the past, but it hasn't been success for me. It's always been a failure. So yeah, I think those two were quite 
What, what did you, what words did you put next to failure? Just my past. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So like I, even though, um, you know, I've done well in business and, and, you know, I've been successful in my corporate career and things like that. There's actually been quite a lot of things that I haven't, I haven't felt that I've been successful in. So. Right. Thank you. That's very revealing. Very useful, I'm sure, for everyone. Would anybody else like to share a surprise answer or something that uh, Karen and then Kathy? So I was shocked when you said women, I said assertive. And I'm Karen from outside Philadelphia in the US. And um, I just think it's been because of the women that I've been working with lately my whole look at the way I and for men I wrote sexy and normally in my old job and my corporate <laughs> career in the past men were so powerful and women always seemed to take a back seat and I think now the switch was just really completely <laughs> it shocked me that those were the words I picked up and then for failure I put learning which I think was a big growth point for me Very good. that I I don't look at failure as a bad thing anymore yes. I look at it as something I can learn from to do yes. better I, I just I remember I put it's not real um because all these exercises I did, I did myself my, my most shocking one was men I was like well I understand why well, I've been single now for actually all my life yeah. A um, bit of clearing up to do there then, Bridge. You know, so, so um, that's why I, you know, I, I think this is a, it's, it's an interesting exercise and I'm going to give you a few tools um, after we've, you know, been around the, everybody to, um, to show you how you can get even deeper results because it is very important to, uh, to do this. And, and it's interesting, you know, it's like, wow, I can't believe I believe that. So, uh, so that's always cool. Everyone wants to know more about themselves, right? Kathy, what came up for you? Yes, hi. I'm, I'm, my name is Kathy Smith, and um, I actually live in Kingwood, Texas. And um, it's, what is strange is that we've all chosen to talk about men and women. And I, again, I come from, I mean, I'm a child of the 50s, so I was brought up that men were top dog, women were subjugated. Basically, when I was at school, I was offered a secretarial job or a teacher. There was absolutely no way was I going to go to university. And so I worked for men right up until I stopped working in 1984. So it was interesting that when I put against men, I put equality, which, was, it just, which, I, which I would never have done you know, even just a few years ago, I always thought that, you know, men were in charge. And unfortunately, sorry, so sorry to the men on the call. <laughs> they do tend to be in charge of the world. And um, yeah. it's been my soapbox for years. And um, so, yeah, and again, forget against women. If I, I guarantee a few years ago, if I'd have been asked this exercise, I would have put subjugated. And now I put strength. So again, interesting, the dynamics have changed that I think men as equal and I think of women as being strong. There you go. Fantastic. Major, major shifts then and, and, and a surprise to, to see that shift within yourself. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Deborah. Hi Bridget, I'm Deborah Walker and I live in um, the Lake District in the UK. I'm uh, partnered with the same company that Bridget is partnered with and we also have a, a business, uh, a family business that we've been running for about 25 years. So I, um, I found this really quite interesting because I, when you actually said the words, it was, I went with, um, after the breathing particularly, I went with how that makes me feel rather than um, men in general or women in general. So my first thing, my first met when I wrote down men, the first thing I wrote down was emotions rather than because uh, I was listening to other people and it's how I, I'm listening as as they're talking about men in society maybe or or how they 
sort of men in general rather than I won't be what it's actually the emotional or the feelings I was getting as you said the word so I feel it's slightly different and for women I've got a lot of earthly um I don't know if you want me to go through them yeah, um, yeah, go, go, go. Okay. um love I had universe uh, work I had freedom money I had control sex I had fulfillment success freedom um failure lessons and god i put metaphysical beyond physical so that those were my how it really they kind of stirred up emotions in me that's how yeah. i saw the exercise so Amazing. Mm. Thank, thank you deborah gosh I, I think i'm the most complicated person <laughs> <laughs> i don't think so bridget i think mine is a pretty yeah pretty yeah we want a, we want a man's point of view <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, Tony, for those of you uh, who don't know you, please introduce yourself and uh, give us your answers. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tony. Uh, Bridget and I go a long way back and uh, great friends. Uh, you see my reflection? I look like a Kentucky Fried Chicken guy. <laughs> Colonel Sanders! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to shave Prince tomorrow weather. <laughs> um, and they've got the glasses as well. <laughs> So the first one I would, I before we started. So that was I, when you said men. I've just been watching um, the thing about Willie John McBride at eighty and in his five line stores. So rugby was in my head. So rugby just came out. So that was five minutes before we came for this. It's Tony, regards to Tony. Tony, before you carry on. T tell everyone a little bit about your background, so that, that put, perhaps put a bit more into perspective about your answers as well. Um, what my life background? Well, just you know, your music and sport and. Well, yeah, I'm the missing bit, so uh, I'm, uh, you know the fact I'm the. That's the interesting bits. <laughs> okay, well, I I'll leave the, my personal life out tonight. Yeah, just a little bit about you know your what you're passionate about. Um, obviously, my daughters, my grandchildren, and um, we're a big personal passion now. And I put my head completely into it is music, um, and writing, playing guitar, harmonica, singing, and I, um, I'm working on um, other things which I've got planned. Just before this all knocked down, I was ready to go on a cruise as a musician. So I would have been going around the Mediterranean, wherever, which would have been okay. But obviously, that's not happening. Um, and I was just going to do a video of a song I wrote that I got an award for. Um, and we're going to do re record it and shoot a video of it. So all that is gone because obviously I've been locked down at home alone. Three months. Yes. Hence. And in your younger years, you were a. Uh, I played rugby. I played. Level uh, rugby player. I was, yeah, I played rugby. I had um, a few games at top flight, at, um, first class rugby. I toured um, every, most countries throughout Europe, uh, right through to Romania, Singapore, Hong Kong, States, Canada, and all of Europe. Um, so that was my passion, which was my main sport. It's actually the only sport thing because I was breaking the others. But, um, tell, tell us a little bit about the responses that you got now. I think because I've spent so much time alone, I, I see my daughters at the end of the half, but I mean for the first probably two weeks because obviously I was ill a um, uh, year and a half ago. So because of chemotherapy, so I was seems to be um, high risk because I don't know what condition my immune system is in. Um, but I think it's pretty good. Uh, so the bright side of that, I was scanned in uh, just before the COVID kicked off. And the scans have been clear and good. And uh, I'm starting to actually get back to fitness. Um, so I'm starting weights and yoga. And I'm um, starting to get there. I think I've still got a bit to go mentally. Um, again, you know, talking to inanimate objects when I've been alone is uh, 
Right, so to tell, tell us, give us a couple of examples of some of the words that came up and what you responded. I think uh, women, it's, uh, I have great respect for women. I think women should run the world. I don't think men should. I, I, hear, men. hear. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I shout, I shout from the treetops. I'll argue with anyone. Women, women would do much better. Can you, can you turn your face slightly towards the cameras? Because we can't hear you so well. Sorry, I'm just... Thank you. Sorry, it's either me or me being deaf. And uh, so, but also, it, I suppose it triggers the sense of loneliness for me. Uh, no, what did you put? What did you, what did you put? What words did you put? I miss, I miss the company of a woman. Yeah, so, but what about, you know, okay, so let's just stay with this and then we'll move on. Um, if you, if I you forgot put, to write the words down to my, next to my answers. So. Yeah, so, so that's more of like, a, like a, 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 a word, like for example, for women, I put smart, loyal, annoying, kind, loving, need more confidence. I, I, to, to me, um, all encapsulated. Women, all know. encapsulating. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll take a champion. He's a champion for women and uh, we are all encapsulating, multifaceted. Yes, yeah. and I think also I took something from, I think from last week when I watched the replay. So therefore, when I look at things in like, so when we look at in like money coming into it and things like that, and I thought about, you know, that I have you know, a, a couple of accommodations that go out, and so they're obviously they're empty. And you know, I thought, well, what if I forget about the money because I'll survive, um, and it will change. But the fact is, that's probably given me the break to work on myself here because I haven't. Because one part of it is the my converted guide with Airbnb, so no one's been here, so. I've worked on myself, which is it's been good, because. Um, well, you, you you know that you're that's very unusual for men actually to do that, so so you can give yourself a big pat on the back. I'm just gonna have to, I'm just gonna have to cut you off there because the time sure. is running, running on. The fact is, I, I have to. A, a, few more, a few more people. Okay, so well, thank you. Thank you for being uh, honest about women and Ooh. feeling that we're all encapsulating. We take that any day. <laughs> Anyone else like to share before we just go on to the last part and, uh, and talk about, uh, you know, how we're going to get even more insights into ourselves? Anyone else? One more, one more testimonial. Laura, thank you. Introduce yourself, Han. Tell us where you're from and uh, what came up for you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Laura. I'm originally from Wales, but now I live in Paul. Um, I'm a carer for my daughter and I've got my own online business as well. Um, so for men, uh, I put bold, um, which I don't know why, <laughs> but I did. Um, for women, I put tough and annoying. Tough and annoying. Oh, I put annoying. That's yeah. really funny. <laughs> so clearly I'm annoying. I think I'm annoying. <laughs> um, Love, I put heart. Uh, I think the next one was, I didn't write what they were, I just put my answers down. Was it um, work was the next one? Yes. I put disorganized. Ooh. Mm, that doesn't surprise me, I put that, to be honest. Work in progress, let's put. Yeah. <laughs> uh, money, need more. Okay. Sex, not now. <laughs> 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 uh success i want it failure never god peaceful fantastic absolutely wonderful mm -hmm. thank you so much thank you okay so so guys write those topics down and uh you know do them again uh it's not me that's doing this i got these uh this little um quiz from uh the workbook which is called Love Yourself, Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. And uh, she wrote a book called You Can Heal Your Life, which sold 50 million copies. And so it was uh, one of the, you know, 
deepest um, periods of study. Uh, in 2017, I started studying her work. It is, a lot of people criticize it because it is so simple. Um, but it's, in its simplicity exists the brilliance of her work and hence the reason why she sold 50 million copies of her book. And her publishing house, Hay House, uh, has published all the major works of personal development books, you know, pretty much anyway, apart from, you know, maybe a handful. But uh, yeah, she's incredible, incredible, incredible woman. And uh, this is a fun book. It's based upon You Can Heal Your Life, which you need to read first. And, uh, and then there's some, the, you know, the questionnaires inside to learn a bit more about yourself. So the reason I wanted to just um, like bring these things up because ultimately, as I said, and once again, we go back to the same thing. We have a process of cause and effect. Health, wealth, and happiness on whatever level we're experiencing now in our lives as it is, is has its root in our thought okay so whatever our bank account is whatever our relationships are intimate not friendships family whatever our health situation every single thing comes from the root roots and fruits okay now this isn't to say oh my god this this this, and this is a disaster so i must be completely you know messed up inside. Well, the good news is that we're all messed up inside, just to varying degrees and various things, okay? But by definition, you know, we have stuff to sort out. And as a general rule, we, it, you know, it's 80% of our thoughts that we have are negative. That we know, they've been tracked by experts. This isn't me making up this stuff, it's just the way it is. Why? Because a thought is something when we're thinking about something in the past or something in the future. And it's normally based, as I said last week, around the big four, which is guilt, criticism, resentment, or anxiety. Okay, anxiety is when we think about something in the future. Guilt, resentment, and criticism is something in the past. Criticizing ourselves or somebody else. Feeling guilty about something we've done or not being a good enough person or mother or father or spouse or whatever it might be. Women are very good at being guilty and, uh, and then lack of forgiveness. Okay. So all that's a conversation we have in our head about what happened in the past, or we can relive conversations that we've had with people and then start feeling, Oh, I should have said this, or I should have said that again. It's about, you know, really being conscious of the fact that we're very good at criticizing ourselves. Okay, it's, and, and when we're criticizing others, it's actually because within us, we believe that we have, on a some level, we have that to criticize ourselves about as well. Because don't forget, everybody who comes across into our life is a mirror. It's not by chance that we're all here today. Okay, something has attracted us together to come together on this platform for an hour on a Tuesday. Okay, we come from all walks of life, all different countries, different work experiences, but there's something bringing us all together. Okay, a higher power or an infinite intelligence, if you like. We don't need to figure that out. Okay, all we need to know is that who we are is who we attract. And as a general rule, the people we attract and we find fault in them is because on some level, we find we have that fault in ourselves as well. So if you find yourself criticizing somebody for something or other, look deeply inside yourself and ask yourself, how do I see that in me? Okay, how do I see that in me? All right, so now it's about what are we gonna do to do the mental house cleaning? Okay, we're gonna do some house cleaning because this isn't something that happens overnight. It has to be systematic. It has to go into our daily habits. And, you know, as I said last week about cleaning the turkey pan, it sometimes can get a bit messy before it gets cleaner. All right. So we're saying we've got lots of the guys from the US here saying at Thanksgiving, you know, you cook a great big turkey, everybody has a great feed, and they're all feeling great. And then somebody's got to clean the pan. Okay. 
and it's full of all the remnants and the grease and everything from the cooking and now it's dry so it's really difficult to scrub <laughs> okay uh, and so we have to add some washing up liquid and start scrubbing it and then it makes even it's even more disgusting because all the fat and all the rest of it's mixed with all the soap <laughs> and that's not looking good right but the more we clean the more we rinse the more we you know we wash it and so on the cleaner it gets and sparkling and cleaner so it takes time it takes application it takes seriousness all right so this is exactly the same as what we're doing here mental house cleaning it's like showering we recommend it daily right so this is something that is really the most important thing you'll ever do with your life because when you change your thoughts you change your circumstances so why not give full focus to really first of all being conscious of the things that we're thinking that are not serving us in harmonious thoughts hurtful thoughts criticizing thoughts thoughts of guilt okay let's just bring those to the conscious level we don't judge we're not going to beat ourselves up because we thought this, that or the other. We're just doing the best we can. We're always doing the best we can. It's just really now about doing some mental house cleaning. So I know from having studied, you know, many healers and teachers and coaches that there are some common themes that come up every single time some non-negotiables, some daily habits and practices that the, all the big business leaders in the world, the, the teachers, the, as I say, the, the, you know, the leaders, the innovators, no matter what it is, you will find that there are common denominators of success. There are common denominators of success. Somebody even like, I don't know, Warren Buffett or, 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 you know, Napoleon Hill or, you know, great, um, you know, spiritual leaders, whatever it might be. There are common denominators that all these people did that we can draw on and start doing the same if we wish to be successful. And I'm presuming that if you're on this call, you do. All right. So one of the main common denominators, well, there's two actually, I'm going to just talk about this evening um, in the last 10 minutes. There's two common denominators, and this is the practice for the week, right? The first one is the common denominator of association. We are the average of the five people that we spend most of our time with, okay? Uh, we know that by association, we, well, birds of a feather flock together. Okay, so the first thing is, is to figure out who are the five people that we spend most of our time with. It could be just people that we spend time with online or that we spend a lot of time watching on social media or on Netflix. I don't know. Who are the five people I spend most of my time with? If you had a really serious financial or relationship or health problem, would you go to those people for advice? Are those people living the lifestyle that you dream of? Are those people somebody who you would absolutely aspire to and that you see as mentors and guides and, as I say, people who you aspire to and who inspire you? those five people, okay? We call it, call it standing on the shoulders of giants. Now, these don't have to be people that you know personally, right? These are people that you can spend two or three hours a day with studying their work, their audios, their videos, their research, okay? These don't have to be physical people. Okay, so the power of association is the first thing that we can do to start our mental house cleaning because not just by what they say and what they do, but their thoughts will also then, uh, their thoughts will also infuse ours. All right? Because ultimately, if you go into the metaphysical side of things, you'll realize that we are all one universal mind. And so that's why I say, wouldn't it be a funny old world if everything we thought was said in, out loud? 
How would that go for you? Or we'll talk about the roommate inside our head that never shuts up. What if that was a real life person? Would you marry them? Would they be your best friend? How would you get on with them if they were your roommate 24 seven? And they said everything that you say in your head all the time. Okay, how much of a friend would they be? Okay, so when by the power of association, you choose to spend the vast majority of your time with people who uplift and inspire and energize and, uh, and really encourage and support you automatically through the universal power of one mind, you will also rise. Okay, so that's the first thing. Have a look at who you're hanging out with every day. All right, it doesn't have to be someone you know, as I said, it could be somebody that you study or whatever it might be. Your entourage is everything. So the second thing is, I know that there are some people who do this very regularly. I know there are some people who have never done it or maybe who have tried to. The power of being still. You can call it meditation. You can call it just sitting in a room doing nothing. And this is a technique that precedes the modules that we're going to do about imagination, visualization, realization. Okay, this is absolutely critical as a preamble to start manifesting what you desire most in life. Okay, the first thing we have to do is learn how to control the mind and how to still the mind. Perfect stillness, perfect stillness. Okay, so there are four steps to this process. They may well seem a little bit fastidious, my heartfelt encouragement is that you just to do it. So for the first three or four days, go into a room where there's no distraction and absolute silence and just sit with nothing. Eckhart Tolle says it very, very well, the author of The Power of Now. Most of the world's problems would be solved if everyone knew how to sit still in a room for 15 minutes. No phone, no computer, no television, nothing. Just sit and observe the thoughts that are racing through your mind. Do it every day for three to four days or even a week if you can. And just observe that racing thoughts that never shuts up. So the first thing you've got to do is be conscious of the fact that you are listening to those thoughts all the time. So it's worthwhile making sure that they're high quality ones, right? You agree? Okay. The next step is to control your mind to stop thinking. For the initially, you'll only be able to do it for maybe a second or two. You realize uh, how powerful this is that your mind never stops. First, we're just going to let it go, let it ramble, let it talk, let it talk, let it talk for the first few days. And then you're going to say, enough, stop. It'll be maybe a second, two seconds, five seconds. If you're lucky, 30 seconds. Okay. Third step. Same room. Sorry, I forgot to be precise. Same room, same chair if at all possible, okay? I mean, it may not be physically possible, but it needs to be in a room that's quiet, no distractions, and if possible, always to, see that chair there? That gets me every morning for half an hour. Same chair, same room. I open my windows, I see the treetops, let the sun in. Every, you'll find me there every morning for a minimum. And if I didn't put my alarm on, I'd probably be there for two hours. You know, I'm just like, whoo, I'm away, right? Same, same room every single day. A comfortable chair where you're going to be comfortable but not slouching. Okay? I sit cross-legged. You can sit with your legs down or with your feet slightly raised. It doesn't matter, but find a comfortable position but where you stay alert. All right? So first few days, just let your thoughts go crazy wild and just start thinking, wow, that really is a bit of a mess going on. There's a war going on inside, right? Because this voice argues with itself, doesn't it? 
right? I really should go out and do that workout. Oh, no, I can't be bothered. I haven't got time. Well, yeah, I know, but you said to yourself that you were going to do it. Yeah, I know, but you know, it does. Your voice argues with yourself all the time. Do you, do, do you agree? Absolutely. You, you do realize this, don't you? <laughs> this is not a scoop. <laughs> all right. So you want to you want to be listening to that argument because basically what's trying to do is find a comfortable place in the middle so that you you can it, it can go on to the next drama, right? And the next drama and the next drama. All right. So that's the first thing. Stop your mind. Second thing. Go through the process. Three four days. Three four days. Really important. Third thing, you get back into the chair again on the, in the third section, sit down, and this time you're going to will every muscle in your body to relax. Let go of every tension. You can either start from the head and work your body down, or you can start with your feet and go up, or you can do it all in one foul swoop, doesn't matter, you'll find your, you'll find your groove. Okay, just... Oh. Just let the body relax and you will find that 15, 20 minutes is the equivalent of two hours sleep. Because what is exhausting is the mental and physical tension like this all the time, okay? This is where the, all the, the pre-training comes to become a mastermind, all right? So this isn't me saying I'm a mastermind and you're not. This is stuff I have learned from the masters and I am still a student. Just a probably, you know, half a mile along the road, that's all. This is the pre-training to become a mastermind. A master of your mind, you become a master of your world. All right? Relax the body, just, it feels so good. It just feels so good. Okay, you feel yourself tensing up again. Let it go. Okay, and then the fourth section, you're going to learn how to empty your mind. Not control it and stop thoughts, but literally <laughs> empty it. For those of you who know him, when I worked with Alan Nagao last year in Latin America, I remember him saying, and I saw him say it again in the video, he has the capacity at any given moment during a conversation, you know, whatever he's doing, he has, a he has this capacity to <sighs> empty the mind. And when you do, you are filled with infinite energy because it is thought and nervous tension that is exhausting us. It is not the physical work. As far as I know, no one works at the coal face, right? It is the tension that we have mentally and physically that we hold that is literally wearing our body down. And that's what causes all the, you know, the, 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 the war that's going inside us with, you know, with all the radical anti, free radicals and antioxidants. You know, it's just this war going on the whole time because we're so, you know, tensed up with our anxieties and criticizing and, and fear about what's going to happen here and all the rest of it. Okay. And let's face it, you know, the current circumstances have not been helpful to anybody, right? It's the uncertainty. And do you, do you ever find yourself going, oh, I need to drop my shoulders, right? You know, this is this process. If you do it every day for 15 or 20 minutes, what will happen? Wow. You're going to start doing it all day. All day. So you'll notice when you're pushing a trolley around Tesco or the equivalent wherever you, know, you are in the world or you know, or, or, or making a difficult phone call, or I don't know, whatever it might be, suddenly you can find you have this incredible tool just to relax, relax. And then miracles start to happen. Because imagine, for example, all those fears and anxieties, they're like great big barriers, stopping all your good. They're stopping your good. You know, that is just like a great big barrier. As soon as you let that down and relax and let go, it takes a bit of courage. You've got to have the courage to want to do it, okay? But as you do it, courage, practice, builds courage, builds faith, builds, build, builds belief. It's okay to relax and let go and let 
a much more intelligent, higher power take care of the details. Okay, we've got to first of all, learn how to relax and let go. And this is where the practices and the disciplines come in. Every day, every day. And then suddenly it won't be just 15 minutes a day because there's a lot of other minutes in the day apart from those 15 minutes, right? What are you going to do with them? Okay, there's no point in relaxing for 15 minutes and then being like a, a live wire for the <laughs> next 23 and three quarter hours, right? Ultimately, what you want to be is it's in this state of complete non-resistance, relaxation, surrender, all the time. That is where you will be in a state of bliss and joy and happiness, literally, permanently. Okay? But this is all the pre-training. Imagine you're like athlete, Olympic athlete, okay? This is the training now. Okay? This is you going out and doing it every day. Like you go to the gym or take your vitamins or kiss your husband. I don't know. You just do it every day, right? So this is a pre-training to become a mastermind. All right. You remember those steps? If you want to go into this really deeply, there is a book called The Master Key System. Okay. This is a 24 step, 24 week course. Okay. And the four exercises I've just showed with you are the first four exercises in the first, uh, in the first four weeks. I've given you a very brief synopsis. This is serious stuff, guys, all right? This is if you're serious and you're ready to do, you know, do the work. It's amazing. This is the same period as Napoleon Hill, Wallace Wattles, Joseph Murphy, Florence Scovel Shin. These are turn of the century, new thought philosophers. And this guy is actually of Swedish origin and he lived in America and it is a step-by-step -step guide to becoming a mastermind rather than it being theoretical it's a course okay so if you're interested in learning how to do that then into more detail but what i've what i've given you here is enough to get going okay it will give you unlimited power unlimited power when you can just control your mind empty your mind and that lets the infinite power come through you okay if there's any kind of fear or or anxiety or criticism is that imagine it's just like a wall blocking everything all your good all the good that we all deserve okay you know the universe didn't make this amazing planet for it to sit around idle and not be enjoyed okay every single ounce of abundance and love and joy and happiness and peace and in every single area of our life, it's ours. It's ours, but we have to now break down those barriers so we can really have absolute and complete faith that that's true. Okay? And the first step is learning how to empty the mind. Empty the mind. If you're already an adapt at meditation, you know, keep going. If possible, twice a day set the alarm right set the alarm to do it twice a day for 15 minutes i'll tell you what there you go straight into the master class okay so try and do it in the same room same chair and same time every day if you can i know that not everyone has a routine especially at the moment so on but as much as you can preferably if you can as soon as you wake and just before sleep the first 22 minutes when you wake in the morning is when your subconscious mind is its most receptive. So please, when you wake up, do not turn on the news. Okay, do not look at your social media. The first 22 minutes, all right? Scientifically proven what I'm saying here. This isn't woo-woo stuff, right? This is science I'm talking about. Okay, first 22 minutes and the last 20 minutes as you're feeling drowsy and you're going into that period of sleep, you're you are a sponge okay so that's when all the social media has to go off and everything and you go in and just do a little even a micro meditation of two minutes okay some mindful breathing just before sleep so powerful okay so association four step learning how to be a mastermind this is a preamble learning how to empty your mind 
So this week, you're going to have some fun of creating my perfect life, or your perfect life, like my perfect life, okay? So go through this exercise. You know, if you're already used to doing this kind of thing, you can kind of like fast track it maybe a little bit and do the relaxation and the mind emptying all together, okay? I promise you, it's, it makes you feel so good, you just never want to stop, all right? And then once you've done that, get a piece of paper. Can you see I had fun this week? And in the middle, you write my perfect life or my amazing life. Okay. My incredible life, my badass life, whatever you know, my amazing life. Okay, in the middle, All right? Do the relaxation process of what we've done today with the words and obviously with the, the techniques I've just shared and put some subtitles coming out of it. Mine were family, teaching and healing, love and intimacy, business and contribution, friends, personal, domestic. Okay. And then you choose like some subtitles. So as you can see, I put them, the, I, that was my amazing life here in the middle. And then I put little subtitles like, on sticks on pointers, okay? I'm going to do it again because I ran out of space. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, I could put that category, I could put travel, I could put, you know, and then in my personal, I put study, meditation, exercise, nutrition, writing, sleep. Sleep, I put <laughs> uh, self-care, fashion and reading, you know, my passions, okay? And then next to each of those words, I just put, I just did this exercise and I just, my, I just brain dumped. So much fun what came up. Stuff that I kind of knew already, but it was just really good fun to do it on paper. So I'll give you a little example. Um, it's not too personal. Okay, so personal me, Bridget. Okay, not too personal. So I put radiant light, open heart, gentle kindness, gentle words, enthusiasm, my body temple, stillness, energy, ever youthful, uh, radiant energy, peace, miracles, inner happiness, um, gentle words and then under the section of nutrition I put vegan raw fresh organic okay so just just start thinking really about your perfect life okay have fun with it be creative think big don't hold back right don't judge just brain dump on it and see what comes up all right what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to do it X, XXL style and I'm going to do a whole one across my wall here, right? So I'm going to start with my perfect life in the middle and then have, you know, huge sheets of paper with loads of things. Everything's something new. I'll write it down on the paper, right? Do like a mural. Huh? So, you know, do it whatever way. Maybe you want to just do it small or you can buy these like, like these really cool fine liners. You can do it all colored if you want to. Do little drawings. Doesn't matter. Just, just be creative, okay? Design your perfect life. I mean, I put family, children, extended family, fun, love, joy, listening, presence, understanding, acceptance, patience. <laughs> we don't need patience with the family, right? Unconditional love, giving, time, loving, mother. Okay? So all those, just, just be as creative as you want to be. Have fun with it. Do it infused with love, infused with, you know, whatever it might be. It's a bit like sort of a word vision board, if you like. But put and leave space to add words as you go through the day or through your week. So, oh, I'd like to put that word down. Or you might read something and say, oh, that's a nice word. I put that down there as well. Okay. Or if you want to, you could do it all with pictures. Our life now or the life we want in the. the, the no, the, the, the life that you have in your head and that you are in the process of creating. Okay. okay? We take out the word, the life I want, because it's always, if I want, it's like I always want it in the future and we're never going to have it now. So this is what I hold in my head, because the next step to becoming a master creator, once you learn how to get rid of all the, the thoughts that don't do you any good, is how to create a powerful imagination. So powerful, so clear, so detailed, so multidimensional, that you cannot prevent yourself from manifesting it. So you've got to get really clear on what you want, right? You know what they say, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> okay, because you're going to have so much power. 
so much power from with you. You're going to be able to be a master creator. So you're going to need to make sure you're going to create what you really want. Okay. What you really desire. What's really, this is your heart's desire. Okay. It might be nothing completely new, but it's a fun exercise to do, to do again. You can do it with, you know, if you want to cut out bits of magazines or whatever it is, you do it your style. I'm, I'm a words person. I, I love, I love language. You know, it's my, my absolute passion. And so I did, a, I, you know, used a lot of words, but you might prefer pictures or a mixture of two. It doesn't matter. Okay. And then next week, you've got to come and show us. Okay. And then maybe some of you would like to experience, you know, share the experiences of going through this, this process of, uh, you know, deep relaxation and, and quieting the mind. Once you start doing it, it's just amazing. Okay, guys, do we have a deal? Yes. And next week, we're going to go and do some exercises a bit more on wealth and prosperity. We're just going to really focus on money. Okay, we can get a bit more into the where the rubber hits the road. <laughs> and find out what's going on with our regards to money. And uh, we're gonna go into the subconscious a bit deeper again to see where our money blockages are. If we have any, we probably all do. You know, until you're probably as rich as Warren Buffett, you could say that, you know, he hasn't got too many money blockages, right? But we're not, none of us are quite there yet. All right. He's somebody, by the way, who reads for five hours a day. Five hours a day, and he does about three meetings a week. That's why he's, so I've got my little master, this is my mastermind group here that I consult with regularly during the day. Yeah, so I've got Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, Oprah Winfrey, Louise Hay, some of them are dead. Michael Singer, Yog Paramahansa Yogananda, Marianne Williamson, Florence Scovel Shin, Wallace Wattles, and Eckhart Tolle. I'm going to add some new ones as well. So that's something else you can do if you want. Imagine that you can choose anyone you like as your board of directors or business partners. Oh, who would you choose? Mm. Right? What a fun thing that is to do. Mm. Mm. Would you choose Gandhi? Would you choose... A great sports person or another business person would you choose mother Teresa? i don't know who would you choose did you choose your mum and dad no have a think about who you would love to have as your board of directors and then if you're ever stuck you just say to them okay guys i got a problem here i need some help ask them for their advice you'd be amazed the answers you get back so much fun All right, so that can be part of your, you know, your amazing life to have an amazing board of directors. All right, just let your imagination start to flow and then we're gonna start cut. Imagine that your imagination is like a great big block of beautiful marble, okay? And with the work we're doing now, we're gonna be carving out this incredible statue out of this marble. You know, we're gonna, carve it out and sculpt it and make it beautiful and the lines, the light, the reflection, the color, the, the symmetry, the beauty, whatever it might be. And we're gonna chip away and chip away and chip away until it's so clear in your mind, you will just naturally start manifesting it, okay? You up for some of that? Yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> Right, we're done. Thank you so much for this uh, Tuesday session. Uh, I've loved having you with me and uh, it's been so much fun. Please open your microphones and say mm. bye or yes. bye or whatever it might be. Thank you very much, Bridget. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very bye. much. Bye. 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 Bye.